I used to always call Kyrie Irving uh, Kyrie because he's <laughs> he was born in Australia. Yes, he's yeah. an Australian basketball player, and he's a very yeah. he's just a very Australian guy. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. He's he seems seems pretty American to me. <laughs> Do you actually was that was, was that sarcasm? Brunch, hit it, boys. Programming note, we fucked up while recording, so the first part of this is going to sound bad. Basketball season, over. Sure is. But not for brunch, actually. That's true. Because at long last, it took the worst thing in the world happening, the Celtics losing, uh, to get Paul Williams. We'd actually booked Paul Williams before. We'd actually booked Paul Williams like 44 times, but... He was supposed to be on before Lamorne. He was supposed to be on before Lamorne. He agreed to, we agreed to, but there's one thing that none of us, neither of us could ever account for. The time change. 16 hours is the <laughs> most ridiculous fucking thing in the world. Like, today we were even coordinating, you were like, hey, what time do we have Paul Williams again? And I was like, it's either 6 or 8 or when, Let me, it's 10 o'clock his time, and then for 5 minutes, I was just, like, on, no, it's actually 3 minutes, I know exactly, because I actually looked at the timestamp to see how long between text messages it took while I looked up. The difference in you know, there's like a converter and everything. Sixteen hours. You did a real a, life. I don't think anybody knows. Yeah, yeah. You were like, well, can you make sure uh, you know which ta- what time it is on our end? It's like how how could I? It, <laughs> it's it's simply, literally impossible. It simply can't be done. We just have to. We wait. just have to guess when, when we're going to be doing. He seems this. like a punctual guy. He'll hit us up at some point, and then we have to go. So yeah, we got him. Uh, Celtics are out of it. We'll talk about that with him. Quite quite weird wrapping up the the first season of really being basketball fans and basketball boys, because first of all, I mean none of the shit that happened with the Celtics that was supposed to happen happened. Uh, they ended up being a much different team because of injuries and shit. But we were just saying before, how fucking funny is it? The only thing, uh, the the only thing that I had, like you hitched over the your summer, wagon, yeah, to Jason Tatum. Without knowing a fucking thing about him, <laughs> all, I, all I knew was Celtics traded the number one overall pick. Uh, Kevin O'Connor had Tatum ranked second. Everybody obviously had Fultz and Ball 1-2. And then 3, you'd have your Josh Jacksons, your Tatums, and all those guys. Uh, the only person I knew of who had anybody but Ball or uh, Fultz 1-2 were, was Kevin O'Connor. And when, it se- when Jackson was blowing off the Celtics and everything, it seemed kind of obvious that the Celtics were probably going to end up with Tatum. So, uh, I, I, like, people, everything that, that Woj was tweeting, people would respond, like, Tatum better than Fultz and stuff. This, this was the only fucking shit that I knew about Tatum. Uh, but he, then he ends up being, like, like they he missed dunked him. on LeBron in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Final and is clearly the Celtics' best player. And the, the right, the whole story today on the radio is like, I don't know how you don't get the ball to Jason Tatum or it's your <laughs> best player. You're in the Eastern Conference Finals. Come on. This is the guy who led you here. Like, imagine... Like, the, ha- having a team with Kyrie, Al, yeah. uh, Gordon Hayward, yeah. and then, uh, then, like, at the beginning of the year being like... At the end of the season, we're going to be talking about how they just wouldn't give the ball to Jason Tatum in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals. And, that, and that's, that's why you lost. <laughs> uh, so, sad shit. That, that was the first time I've... I mean, I'm I'm obviously... Uh, I, I, I'm into all the Boston sports teams and everything. Except, I mean, I, I really... Yeah, but you're, like, care. desensitized. Totally, totally. You're yeah. jaded. Yes, exactly. Uh, Celtics are kind of... Where I, it was like an area of fun I didn't know that I could even have. Ooh. Like I didn't even like you, you know in movies when like an old woman takes a new lover yeah. and she's like Ooh. like in book club. Yes, exactly. Yeah, like the Celtics are my book club. Yeah. I thought that my days of watching sports and screaming at the TV were long over. My days of wanting to fucking drink based on the result of a sporting event. Like, the I Celtics never, are I, like your mistress. Yeah, like I never necessarily made fun of those people, but. I was like, it. I'm not one of those yeah. people, but with the Celtics, I am for sure one of those people. You bought like eight jerseys. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, like, I don't know, what, only one of them's real. 
I didn't buy it. It was a gift. So, uh, but yeah, I, I you invested. Playing, I, yeah, I invested a lot of coin. <laughs> I wore my Celtics jersey for the first time this uh, this year. Yeah, uh, game seven. So that worked out pretty well. I guess Ugh. I can probably take a, take some blame on that one. I have a little bit of a uh, bros outing this week. Mm. Uh, it's a bunch of the fellas are just gonna take the day off. And uh, we're gonna. It's a little secret mission thing. I'll I'll do, or we're gonna do, and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're just gonna have a day, and we are looking at the weather, and it's gonna be super hot. And we uh, we were all together this weekend, and uh, one of my friends' uh, fiancés was like, "Well, guys, you know it's gonna be ninety three, right?" And we all looked at each other. We were like, "Tank tops and or basketball jerseys, yeah." So oh, man. All my I friends spent, are trash. They don't wear basketball jerseys. I spent today in front of the mirror just, like, trying on fits. The first one I picked, first one I, I had in my head, I was like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to wear these sunglasses. I'm going to wear this tank top. I'm going to wear these shorts. Let me make sure it all still fits. Kind of most of it does. Whatever. Have you have you gone back on, uh, circled around on the idea of buying hockey jerseys from China and cutting the sleeves off? No, did I suggest that? <laughs> yeah. Oh man! So I look like Dean Portman. Yeah, you were like, did I make a Dean Portman joke? No, I don't think so. Wow. But you, but you were like, I think my thing this summer is I'm going to buy. Uh, how nice are the hockey jerseys from from China? And I was like, a little bit riskier than than a basketball jersey. And you're like, I think my new thing is I'm going to buy a, a hockey jerseys and cut the sleeves off. Well, you've got to. If there's one thing you should know, and this isn't necessarily true, but I'm just going to act like it's a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, this isn't true, but it just sounds like a fun thing to say. Uh, I say my thing is going to be <laughs> yeah. a lot, which I don't really, but I, I'm like the oh, kind no, you of do. person who would say like, oh, this will be my thing. And uh, you just, cu- it's like you just practice coming up with ideas <laughs> and you don't make all of them your thing because a lot of them are probably going to be ideas like that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, I, st- I like hockey jerseys. I still look them up every now and then see, hey, I, I it's, it's things. Way less practical. Basically, all the, the hockey jerseys I like are St. Louis Blues jerseys. Okay. I love their last Winter Classic one. Yep, it, very good. It was just their normal one, but yep. just a little brighter. Yeah, well, and, yeah it's it, it, it's a little um, a little simpler than their than their normal one. Yeah, I, I guess I was thinking it's like a two two color scheme. Versus yeah, versus three yeah, because they got they got the red and yeah, yeah. I've got like a '90s blues jersey that so uh, good to this day is the only clothing item I ever wear that gets compliments. No one's ever like, oh, cool sneaks, man. But they're like, wow, I don't know about that. You, you got some good shirts though. No, get, I'm kidding. I get comment on everything. <laughs> yeah, I think one of my favorite shirts. Uh, you have a lot of Father John Misty stuff that I like, but mm-hmm. also the uh, the shirt that is uh, is it Prince or is it Michael Jackson? Oh, Where it yeah. says the other. It's a picture of one, mm-hmm. and it's the other one's name. It's a picture of Prince, and it says Michael Jackson. <laughs> I have two of them because, uh, as you all probably know, I. I deal with the struggle that is being between a medium and a large, depending on the day. <laughs> yeah. So I have that shirt in both sizes, just in case, just so, so any day I am covered. There you go. Yeah. Uh, we One thing that we discussed on Friday mm-hmm. that we never really uh, got to dive into mm-hmm. but was the new Churches album. Came yes. out on Friday. Yes. We were concerned, if you yes. recall. Uh, we, uh, we had reason to be concerned. Uh, what did you think having listened to the album? Uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. Pleasantly surprised because um, the the pre-release singles, again, still not a fan, but they are in, uh, I would say, like the second half of that album. Well, yes. Uh, I'll say uh, my thing that I've written down for the album is really good. Really? Yes. Really, really good. good. I like like how lot. close to every open eye. It's it's not in the same okay. ballpark, but uh, but I I love both of those albums. So really, this you album, love this album? No, I said I love both of those albums, like the first two albums. Okay, okay. And this one I thought was legitimately going to be a Churches is over party, oh. and Lauren Mayberry came out. Did you see the note she put? No, she she put out a note that was kind of like the definition of her people, her people. Uh, it was really going off on uh, critics and just how ugly people can be, and like, oh, what's yeah, wrong with it. you to write that someone's oh, music is bad on. and all, everything like that? But no, like that's uh, again, you read it with the like, she's upset. Yeah, she, yeah, she's she's 
she's angry. Some somebody and I I would be too. If somebody when someone says shit to me that I'm like that's not necessarily true, but basically the thing at your core is you're saying you don't like something I did. Naturally, I'm going to be defensive about it. So that's kind of what she was what she was going for there. But so I I and I hadn't listened to the album yet when she said that. So I was like. Man, this album must fucking blow. Well, I mean, one of the earliest uh, reviews that I saw of it said that it was like a, it was very frustrating. Um, and I guess I can kind of see it. Like it, it, it's sort of a disjointed album. It feels like uh, at points. Yeah, it's yeah. sort of all over the place. Yeah, uh, you'd said that the singles had us worried. That is correct, but there was a huge oversight on our part. Miracle? When we recall, yeah, when we recalled the the songs that were put out before, when I was listening to the album and Miracle came on... I was like, I've heard I this was, song before. Yeah, 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 I was like, and I, I, I know I've heard it a bunch in spin class and stuff, and I just thought, and I remember when I would hear it in spin class, I just thought it was maybe something off a soundtrack or something. I was like, oh, this is just one of those Church's songs that I don't know, but yeah, this is a really good song. Yeah. And, uh... Then when I looked up, where was this from? It was just from fucking Listening like, a to month it. and a half ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a really good song. There's really, there's really only one song of the ones I hadn't heard before that I was like, this is this song isn't very good. Uh, and I didn't like was, Heaven and Hell. Uh, Heaven and Hell I liked a lot. Really? Yes. I didn't really like that one. Real kind of. A, a lot of these songs are more authentically '80s, which are which it is, is cool. This is yeah. This is like for real. In the 80s like, album. Right, like, they, they, they took that turn because they were, like a lot of people, and they were doing it before uh, others, but they were bringing the 80s in, back into the kind of pop, top 40-ish sound. But with, like, a polished, like, uh, yeah. very EDM sort of right, feel like to it. big beats and stuff yeah. like that. And uh, this is very, like, synth, synth-y yeah. 80s, straight down the pipe. Yeah, the only one I didn't like was God's Plan. Okay. And that was a, uh, it was basically... A an attempt at having a I always mess up the guys. Martin is the guy who sings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A Martin song. Uh, I just I, my body automatically rejects every Martin song. That happens with with a lot of bands where like it, there's there's two singers and your brain just picks one or the other. Yeah. Unfortunately, that happens with Jukebox the Ghost a lot. And I think that's not fair. But go Ooh, on. Uh, yeah, I mean, like to me, Lauren is churches. Yeah. So like it's every time I hear a Martin song, I'm like, nope, 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 not churches. But you, so do, you don't like uh, high enough to carry you over. It's it's uh, I like that one. That's the like the most I like a, a Martin led song yeah. because it sounds like Blessed Union of Souls. I love that song. No, it sounds like uh, it sounds like Blessed Union of Souls. Blessed, I get, so a I hadn't thought of Blessed Union of Souls uh, in forever, but they're core that that I. I'm not placing what that chorus is, but that chorus is like a direct, like it's a carbon copy of another song. I forget what it is, but um, this uh, God's plan is basically Martin sung clearest blue without the uh, what's it called the I just can't get enough section. So it's just kind of like hang in there and then doesn't really go anywhere and it's not very exciting. But all the others, like I liked Forever, I liked Graves, uh, Miracles, really good. What's really your top like three? Heaven and Hell. Uh, I haven't heard them enough to, to rank them. I've, but I do agree that the I songs could, that came out before are in the bottom tier. Okay. I, I would still hold my enemy up high, though. I like my enemy. Okay. Uh, Get Out, Get Out was my favorite of, like, the initial ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't, I won't listen to that song now. Yeah, because yeah. Because it's, I've, like... Yeah, because it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I think that's, it was the, it was the, um, I think it felt like the most quintessential yeah, like the uh, closest thing. thing two churches yeah. of the pre-release singles which which is why I kind of latched onto that mm-hmm. but with the other stuff like there's a lot of good churches music in this that is way better than get out so I think that I'm just like I just won't have any use for that song yeah um, graffiti is an absolutely Graffiti's elite awesome. is an absolutely yeah. elite churches song I might put I would I think that that would fall into my top five I'd have to listen again but uh Graffiti's re- top five overall. Like, overall, uh, uh, and I uh, big reason for that is because like it's it is. I think one of the best things about churches is that like the music is often really really upbeat, uh, and the lyrics are just like fucking devastating. They have like very sneaky, like so sad lyrics. In in uh, a lot of these songs, and uh, graffiti is one of them. 
That's one of my favorite things in music. And actually, I said it way back in the day when we did uh, our little interview on the Nosebleeds a million years ago. Oh, really? Yeah, I said I love uh, songs that musically are happy, and the, but the lyrics are sad. Third Eye Blind in it. Yeah, Third Eye Blind does that. Uh, Maxwell Silver Hammer is uh, probably the the case in point. It's a very boppy song. It's about a kid who goes around murdering people. Classic. Um, yeah, just good <laughs> stuff. Uh, really Gone, we gotta talk about, because that song's gonna rule live, because... I don't I, know if I've uh, really sunk my teeth into that one. I can't even That's the one, it. that's the, it's not necessarily a ballad, but it's like the, it's the most vulnerable song they've done. Okay. That's like the, they've never had a song that's just, you focus on Lauren and she sings to you, and for someone with that interesting of a voice... I didn't realize until I heard the song. I was like, oh, yeah, they've been missing this kind of song. So that's going to be really cool. Um, yeah, they, this this album quelled all of my concerns. Yeah, same. They're, like, they're a good band. They were a good band. They still are a good band. I uh, said to you, uh, Miracle, upon further inspection, because clearly we very much glossed over Miracle. Yeah. Uh, Miracle, to me, sounds like a, an Imagine Dragons song. Like, like churches doing Imagine Dragons, which is funny well, the because I bad, really like that song. The only bad thing about that song is it has an O chorus, which mm. is clean it up, guys. <laughs> but other than that, really, really good song. I like. I also like Graves. Uh, my favorite part of Graves is Lauren lets the Scottish accent slip. On, she does uh, that a lot. Yeah, and yeah. this on the, and this album in particular. No, well, she does that. No, uh, uh, she does that. Um, uh, did it make you see so clever? What song is that? Did it wear it on your sleeve? Yeah, wow, well, oh, fuck. There is no... It's on the first album. No, it's on, it's on the... That's on, uh... The Mother We Share? No. Uh... Churches. Tether? No. Um, there is... That's on the second album, I think. Uh, sure, it's... I'm gonna... Church gun. Did you, yeah, it's yeah, gun. it's in the first one. It's gun, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but she says throne mm-hmm. in Graves, and it's like, it is very Scottish heavy throne. Yeah, I like singers that, uh, th- that doesn't happen for some reason. We can Not ask uh, Paul Williams about this. How come singers with accents, um, are able to mask from, it so well? Yeah, d- or d- that's more of like a, I guess a speech pathologist would answer that better. But accents just don't come out in music. But sometimes, like Kate Nash, Lauren Mayberry, when they sing, you can just hear that they have an accent. Paul Williams. Paul, no, not really. I think he can. Uh, let me think. We'll ask him. Okay. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we're, we'll get to, to, to Paul Williams in just a second. But we've obviously talked about him a lot. He, uh, he has an album out called Surf that is surf music that is unbelievable. He's surf. He's actually Chance the Rapper. Um, <laughs> or I should say he's uh, the, the late Donnie Trumpet, now Nico Segal. Uh, yeah, he's got an album called Surf Music that's really fucking good. He's a comedian, and he co-hosts the Advanced Analytics Podcast. Here's a little mishmash of just shit that he does, uh, starting with him on Advanced Analytics explaining the NBA draft lottery presentation. And then we'll come back with him. I, I don't fully get it. I never get it. But like at one stage, they're like, and the eighth pick or something is uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers. And then they're like, there's like a cheer. And they're like, which means the Kings have leapt into the top three. Oh. And they're like, you already know the Kings have it. Like, I, I, I don't yeah. get it at all. But um, it's good a, analysis. Good advice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real good. But, um, she said she wants braces, but you don't. Let KD score. Why is there a crunching sound in the background? Oh, no, sorry. That's just on the mic you're hearing. It's because I spilt a glass of water on my laptop, and so I poured rice all over it, and then I was just I was just dispersing the rice evenly around the keyboard. <laughs> so, the, so the listener can't hear that, the big crunching sound, and it's you spreading rice on your keyboard. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to clear it because I'm trying to type right now. And I might not be the sharpest crayon, but that's because I'm your favorite. And, and they also showed a lot of, the other day, they showed quite a bit of in Houston of J.J. Watt and uh, 
Justin Timberlake. And it annoyed me seeing Justin Timberlake. Yeah, not cool. Yeah, n- two not cool guys. But also Justin Timberlake was getting so excited. And it's like, mate, you're a Grizzlies fan. You're like a part-time Grizzlies owner. <laughs> who's he, who's, who's t- Timberlake supporting? Were, they were in Houston and he was like high-fiving people and stuff. And it's like, what the heck? Now we're trying to get Williams, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Yes, we're, we're so, you basically our podcast for roughly a month or so has been about you. So that's kind of we've only just okay. all of all of our guests we've made talk about basketball, uh, or 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 it's just been us talking about your shit. It feels like it's been like oh, a, okay. we've had, we've had like a lot of preseason games talking about basketball to have you on, and this is the regular season. Yeah, right. We're, I am. Um, go ahead. Okay, sorry. It's, it's game time. It's, no, I was just going to say I was I was I was meant to listen to an episode or two to like before I came on because just to get a, like a idea of the the vibe. But I'm kind of glad I didn't if it's uh, if the podcast is mainly about me. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, we we do we love when we have guests on who haven't checked our shit out because it really creates a real and welcome to my nightmare, <laughs> bitch, kind of thing. Um, <laughs> Okay. And like we had we had an actor on uh, a while ago when we were like, hey, do you want to come on to talk about this movie that you weren't in? But we just feel like maybe you could come on and talk about it. And he was like, uh, yeah, sure. But I- I'm not going to have time to see that movie. And we were like, well, you can just come on and we'll tell you about the movie. <laughs> and we just literally had an yeah. episode where we were telling some guy who did not care about what we were talking about. <laughs> something so <laughs> yeah okay great <laughs> so we can go in a lot of uh different directions uh let's start with this one i think it's the question that's on most of our listeners minds uh so you've got out you've got cert music out which is seriously one of the best pop albums out it's right great. now uh oh, you thanks, do guys. you do advanced analytics which is my favorite sports podcast uh oh, you're, you're a very funny comedian lord follows you on twitter uh does. but so here's the question how, how are you famous uh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I, uh, I, I mean, I, yeah, I, I do, I do stand up here in New Zealand, mm-hmm. uh, and yeah, and the music obviously, and very rarely on, on TV here, but like if I walk down the street, no, no one knows who I am. Very, very rarely someone will know, like once every, I reckon once a month someone knows who I am probably. Mm-hmm. You don't have a Wikipedia page. We did notice that. Oh right, no, yeah, my brother does. My brother in New Zealand is is way more famous. He's he's famous. He so he's on the podcast as well. Well, right. so wait, yeah. guys, so guys, guys, famous. Yeah, I like that you're shocked about this. This is great. This yeah, is it is surprising. Self esteem. Is this like a um, source of contention in your family? No, no. I'm. Are uh, you like, hey, yeah. guy? Where's your album, bitch? <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. I'm, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it, and I think because um, actually, yeah, it did swing in high school. I kind of, I kind of started like looking back. What I was basically doing was making like parody songs. Like when I was like this, is, like when I'm like 16, and I, uh, I made, I had a YouTube channel where I had like these parody kind of mainly rap parody rap videos, and um, so briefly they were kind of popular at least in my hometown. And briefly, I was the most famous person in the family, but he then quickly uh, overtook me because, yeah. So but I'm he, coming back. No, <laughs> no, uh, so he's a comedian? Yeah, yeah. And he, so he's on a, on a TV show here that you guys will never have heard of because it's, I mean, it's a New Zealand TV well, show. Well, we, we listen to New Zealand podcasts, so you never know. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I, was I, mean, on a, I was on a New Zealand radio show the other week. Oh wow! Yeah, what show was it? Sport Breakfast or something like that. Okay. Oh, cool. So, yeah. So I might be more famous in New Zealand than you, which yeah, would be bullshit. I mean, yeah, probably. <laughs> that would, 
it, it wouldn't surprise me. It, it honestly wouldn't surprise me. I was actually looking at my statistics the other day, and yeah, actually, um, so you guys are in Boston, right? Yes, yes, yeah. So, but that kind of uh, New York, I think, is my is my most I'm like most downloads and plays. Uh, but Boston, I think, is up there, and uh, London's up there. But New Zealand's like I'm I'm struggling here, man. <laughs> They hate me in New Zealand. So you're like, uh, you're like the, the Pixies were never big in the United States, but they were huge in Europe, and right. they're from Boston, and they were just like no one really cared. And nowadays they play in the United States, and they'll sell out these big places, and everyone will be like, oh yeah, the Pixies, this classic act. But it's like motherfucker, yeah. you did, you, you only know <laughs> about them because they got big in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, amazing. So one day but- you're gonna. You're going to sell out New Zealand one day and you're going to be like, you fuckers only know me because of Boston. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Do you play shows? Nah, not really. I, I do. Um, I very Basically, what I've been doing in terms of music is I'll do one gig and it's just whenever I'm releasing a, it's like a listen. It's almost like an album launch. And oh, then cool. that's it. But um, I want to do more. Yeah, I, de- I definitely want to do more because the last one was 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 real fun. That was like when yeah when I really surf music. I, it was real small time, but uh, but uh, yeah, it was it was super fun. So I want to do, do another you, one. Do you dance at these uh, these release parties because the music video for surf music is unbelievable? Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> uh, I actually yes yeah i will i usually do if there's like a routine kind of like that i'll definitely bust it out for sure although that video hadn't come out so i think everyone was a little confused <laughs> <laughs> who's the, the other so chris is the other guy and, and i was that, that's what i was gonna ask who the hell is that guy because he is he's quite something himself how famous yeah, is he chris. uh <laughs> i mean actually i've been kind of checking because we were playing some game like a board game once and then we for some reason we got into a conversation about who has more Instagram followers. And so we went to check and we actually had like, we were like two, like there was like two <laughs> separating us. Like we were like almost identical. It was crazy. And then, so every now and then I'll check to be like, how am I going in comparison to Chris? And, uh, v- f- originally he jumped way ahead, like by a few hundred. And I was like, Oh man, this sucks. <laughs> but then I, I, I stormed back and took the lead. Anyway, I haven't checked it. I haven't checked it in weeks, that's so what I happened. have no idea where it that, is currently. That's what happens with me and Pete. He has seventeen, and I have fifteen. But I'm going to come storming back soon. <laughs> and once I get to twenty, he's fucked. There's no. There, <laughs> I'll just there, have to delete my account. Yeah, there's there's right. no hitting that. But like, so I I just want to fucking pick your brain about surf music because it's seriously it's such a fucking good album. We've pushed it oh, really. Thanks. Our our friend. Uh, if you get really popular in the United States, it's going to be because of our friend. Uh, I don't know if if you know who he is, John Feidelberg from Barstool Sports. He's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. obsessed with you, and he he's the one that told us oh, about cool. you. Oh, great! Yeah, so he's the he's the true guy. I should be thinking, not you. Guys. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, no. the, a, co- a comedian had said something about surf music, so he checked it out, which is yeah. wild. Because whenever someone's like, "Oh, you got to check this out," you just don't do it. That's like that's. Well, what kind of loser actually listens to recommendations? But he did it, and he was like, "Guys, this album is fucking wild." Oh, great, man! That's that's amazing. Yeah, I think I think it started with uh, so a friend of mine, James Acaster, who's a British comedian. Yes, and his stand ups on Netflix. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was it was (laughs) it was he he did me a real favor because he actually tweeted about the album like as soon as it came out because he's always been, uh, you know, a, a true a true supporter of, of what I do. And, uh, and he tweeted it and then he did the Netflix specials. Like just after that, they came out like a little while after that. And, um, and then he actually, I felt like he, as a favor, he was like, uh, he was like, came into a lot of followers probably post the Netflix thing. So he tweeted it again. Uh, and then, yeah, I, I guess, is it Dan Fiedelberg? Yes. Dan Fiedelberg. I I'm guessing probably saw it from him. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, wh- when did you make the uh, switch from not necessarily switch, but like when did you go from making funny rap things to being like I can be a comedian who also makes good pop music? I'm yeah. I'm glad you say that because a lot of people were like, "Are these meant to be comedy songs?" I'm like, "Nah." It's, it's I'm kind of doing two separate things. Yeah. But, um, uh, I 
so I, I was doing kind of yeah rap parodies in high school. Then when I went, to, I, I after high school, I started doing more just like it was getting more less comedy, and and they were originals now. And then I I felt like maybe in 2013 I kind of made the switch to like uh, trying to do more like pop stuff and. Yeah, it's been it's been a slow it's been slow because I yeah I've kind of been doing other stuff as well trying to do comedy and and whatnot but uh, yeah so two thousand thirteen <laughs> well two thousand thirteen is actually a, a seminal year for your pop music career because if I were to take a guess two thousand thirteen around uh, like June of two thousand thirteen is probably when you wrote number one <laughs> yeah yes. <laughs> I, I I can't remember the but yeah, I don't know how I like nailed that. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So to to people uh, who don't know, uh, Paul has a song called Number One that is literally the mind of a person watching the 2013 NBA draft and turning it into a love song. I could be your number one. I could be your Anthony Bennett. I be your Anthony Bennett. I ain't no one and done. I could be your Anthony Bennett. I be your Anthony Bennett. And it's fucking, it's awesome. It's so fucking good. There's a follow. It, it's the song's mainly about Anthony Bennett, which led mm. him to make a. You so then you made another song called Euro League, also yeah. also like Classic. a breakup song about yeah. Anthony Bennett. Uh, so this means that surf music was in the works for four or five years easily. <laughs> I, yeah, essentially, it was a it, yeah, it was a lot. It was a long uh, process, and it, I think that was partly. I mean, I'm glad, I'm kind of glad it was, because then it kind of got that, it kind of has like a bit of a, I feel like, for, at least for me, it's got kind of like a, a nice arc through it, but uh, yeah, it, it took a long time, it was... It was <laughs> That's going to be really weird, because I feel like the like the, the cycle of stuff for comedy is sort of short, and then here's sure. a project that you just worked on for like five years. <laughs> yeah, basically, basically, and it definitely, I, I put it on pause quite like you know chunks of that for sure like uh because uh yeah I'd, I'd like i did my first comedy show and obviously like i spent quite a while like working on that and uh yeah so uh, but yeah it was uh it was a long process i think so is it like just a thing where you I- i'm sure that because when you're not on a label and, and or anything like that there's no hard fast thing of all right, we need these 10 songs by this, or we need this project done by this. The flip side of that is you could theoretically just never end up putting anything together. Was it a thing yeah. in your mind where you were like, once I have like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things that I really fucking like, that's when it becomes a project? Uh, yeah, kind of. And I, well, I think I was always like gonna, I was like always thinking I was making like a, like an album of songs, but, um, but yeah, like I hadn't really planned, hadn't really planned it or anything. It was just kind of like, just constantly chipping away at it or working, just making a song. I didn't really think about it at all. I just kind of did it to be honest. I don't really know. Has there been any, uh, Anthony Bennett, uh, either basically, do you know if Anthony Bennett has heard these songs? <laughs> uh, I do not know that. I, I follow him on Instagram and he doesn't post often. Uh, but I, yeah, I've had no contact with Anthony Bennett. I, I feel like I should make a video though. Maybe you should just I comment guess. on it and just be like, Hey man, I've got a couple songs about you. If you want to <laughs> like l- link in bio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have some really polished pop songs specifically about you. It's funny that you yeah. say he doesn't post often and you guess you could say that his post game's weak. Ooh, <laughs> nailed it. Ooh. cause he stinks at basketball. <laughs> yes. yeah. That's the best thing. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just gonna say, I wonder where he is at the moment. Like, where is he, is he playing somewhere? Is he? Just, he used to be like playing for like the main. Yeah, he came to the main Red Claws. There's, yeah, there's yeah. really no nothing to say that he couldn't be playing for the Cavaliers right now. Yeah, like, honestly, <laughs> right. He, yeah, he should. Kendrick be. Perkins is on the Cavaliers. Yeah. I don't think it's out of the question that Anthony Bennett could be on the Cavaliers. Yeah, for sure. I was at a barbecue over the weekend, and one of my friends was he was playing surf music and songs from that album, and. uh when number one came on, 
we were saying to a couple people who we've, we've been trying to tell about the album. We were like, oh, dude, listen, this is that guy, Paul Williams. This is the guy he's got some, like he's got a lot of basketball references in his songs. And one of my friends was like, this is really good. But why would he make the song about Anthony Bennett? When you look at it in hindsight, do you like it more or less when you know that this song about I can be your number one is about the worst case scenario of being somebody's <laughs> yeah. number one? Oh, more for sure. More for sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I had to ask my friends what it meant uh, because I'm a new basketball fan. Um, right. I, I had to ask my friends what it meant uh, if you were to say to someone – Girl, don't do me, or please don't do me like they did Nerlens Noel. Please don't do me like they did Nerlens Noel. With a close up on my frown. With a close up on my frown. And they yeah. were, they had to explain to me like, oh, he went a little later than he thought he would have gone, and he yeah, was yeah, yeah. They kept showing him. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that was a special draft, actually, for me as a New Zealander, because that was the year Stephen Adams was drafted. So it was a, it was a really, uh, I mean, it was, it's famously kind of a weak draft. Although Giannis Antetokounmpo was, mm-hmm. yep. uh, was taken that year, but after uh, Kelly Olynyk, <laughs> yeah, of course, by the Celtics, right? They would have drafted Kelly. Yeah, yeah, yep. yep. um, nailed it. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's always interesting looking. I love one of my passions is like looking back at old NBA drafts. Oh, are you a draft do over guy? Do you ever see those? Uh, yeah, I, I, I often look at them. I mean, I don't, I don't make them or anything. If that's what you mean by draft that's the, that's guy. the saddest thing in the. I mean, mock drafts are stupid, but they're fun and they're mindless, and everyone loves looking at them. The yeah. worst, weirdest thing in the world is the like draft do over. What would yeah. happen if teams could travel back in time and pick yeah. different players? It's like uh, they they yeah. would. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm a. I'm a die. I'm a diehard Orlando Magic fan. Oh, we're gonna get to so that. The draft is always is like is like Christmas. Is like Christmas for us, kind of. Well, because you always have a, like a top tenish pick. Yeah, yeah, basically, <laughs> basically, it's it's our playoffs for sure. Uh, can I tell you something about Stephen Adams? You just mentioned Stephen Adams. Uh, yes. Uh, the best thing about Stephen Adams is saying Stephen Adams in a New Zealand accent, and so. Okay. Whenever my friends and I are talking about Steven Adams, we don't do this with any other player. We'll be like, oh, and they've got this guy, they've got that guy, and they've got Steven Adams. And they've, uh, <laughs> and I, I don't know why. I also do, I do it with, uh, I used to always call Kyrie Irving uh, Kyrie because he's <laughs> he Australian. Was born in <laughs> yes, he's yeah. an Australian basketball player. And he's a very, yeah. he's just a very Australian guy. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. He's, he seems, Seems pretty American to me. <laughs> Do you actually was that was, was that sarcasm? Uh, yeah, no, it's sarcasm. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. No, but like I, I'll sorry. I'll be like, who's that Australian basketball player? And they'll name like ten different people. I'm like, no, yeah. the other guy, Delevedo. the point Delevedo. guard. Yeah, Matthew yeah, yeah. Nah, <laughs> he was on the Cavaliers. Ah, oh, shit. Now he's in the Celtics. He's he didn't go to Game <laughs> Seven, and that might be a controversial thing. Oh yeah, Kyrie Irving, that that Australian yeah. basketball player. Right, right, right. Um, um, how did you become a Magic fan? Uh, it's a long story. I mean, it's, it's yeah. not that. <laughs> uh, I mean, basically, I think it started at, when I was very young. Firstly, like the the Magic were like a new and cool and exciting team, and they had obviously some very cool, exciting players. Mm-hmm. But um, in New Zealand, like in the like nineties, you could only get like the merch of like three <laughs> teams. You could get like the Chicago Bulls, mm-hmm. the Charlotte Hornets, yep. or the Orlando Magic. Those are like what? I, no Supersonics? No. Uh, oh, maybe. I maybe. sort of. I'm. If I had to pick three teams from the night, oh yeah, it would I would hundred percent. Yeah, you're right. Those actually, three teams. yeah, because everybody had yeah. like I had a Shaq jersey when I was like a kid, even in I, America you could only buy those three teams. Yeah, yeah. They just didn't make yeah, much yeah. for other like teams. Like starter, like starter only made uh, only had jerseys with those three teams. <laughs> Uh, yeah, right, 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 right. Hornets were huge with uh, with merch back in the day because it was mm-hmm. Well, kids yeah. and kids loved that logo, like the um, Hornet dribbling the basketball was so cool. Yep. But, yeah, um, uh, so there was that, and then our next door neighbor who lived like the house kind of above us, he um, he had family in Orlando, and they would send him gear, and he so he would he would like hang out with my older brother a lot. 
And so he would always just talk about how the Magic were the coolest team. And so we kind of, like, I feel like originally Guy was kind of a Magic fan back then as well. Because we always had, um, because then we'd get, like, I remember my mum bought us, like, Orlando Magic caps. And uh, and anyway, I've just been a Magic fan ever, like, for as long as I can remember. Just kind of because of that. Also, I've been to Orlando a couple of times because my... uh, my dad had work conventions there when I was I was real young. I haven't been in so long, but uh, mm. so I've been to Magic games as well. But um, basically, that's it. And man, love that team. Love so, all those guys. So, do you get up in the morning to watch NBA games? They're actually yeah in New Zealand. They're in really good time. Like they're like the middle of the day. Like a game normally starts at like twelve or one. Ooh, kind of, or sometimes even. But it's the like, previous day. Right? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we're in the future. Yeah, I was going to say, day. please don't spoil for our listeners. Uh, this episode <laughs> is coming out on, on Tuesday. I already, know, yeah, yeah, I already don't... know who wins out of the Golden State Warriors uh, <laughs> Rockets Game 7, but I won't say anything. I won't say it. You can say it's the you, you can just say it's uh it's the Warriors and we could be like, Wow, he nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> There's I no mean, way he could have possibly known that the Warriors were gonna win game seven against mm. the Rock. Well, I'm not gonna spoil it. I'm not yeah. gonna spoil it. But uh yeah, they, they do win. They do you win. uh you had the Celtics winning game seven and uh credit to you, you had the Celtics taking a lot of charges against LeBron yeah. and guy made Fucking. fun of you so much. I posted the clip of it on Twitter of you saying like, they just need to take a bunch of charges and guy. <laughs> yeah. was fucking, his like, not that famous he was, ass, was really, <laughs> was really sassing you. And yeah, he was. And after the first charge, Pete texted me and he was like, wow, Paul Williams called it after the second one. We were like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but also both Marcus Smart as well. I, I rate yes, Marcus right, Smart yeah. in terms of uh, in Marcus terms Smart. of help side help side defense. And um, yeah, I was gu- guys. I come clean. I was gutted about the Celtics losing that. Uh, I was really on the bandwagon in a major way because you're a Brad Stevens guy. I like I love Brad Stevens. Also, I just loved the whole. I just love the whole vibe of the team. Like because uh, I hated the Celtics back when back in like. The kind of big three. Well, also, as a Magic fan, they were they were Eastern rivals. Uh, yeah, really. but um, but man, I love the Celtics currently. Like, just I love all their players basically, and just love the kind of hustle and team team orientated vibe. I don't know. Do but, you think that that you're gonna like them less next year when Kyrie and Hayward come back and they're kind of like a mm, bordering on super team? E- uh, I mean, yeah, I might like Mike them less, but I, I don't think I'll hate them. I, I definitely won't hate them. But um, but I do think they're going to be kind of the dominant team in the East for a while now. So, don't, guys, don't be too sad about yesterday. Yeah. Oh, no, like, you should have seen it. As soon as the game ended, all of Celtics Twitter and everything was like, boom, fucking 2019 NBA champions. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we got to act sad for like for one second <laughs> i like yeah. i sent over a tweet and i was like wow what a fucking embarrassing way to end that uh, to end that season and everybody everybody was like attacking me they were like, they're like shut the fuck up no Kyrie, no no Hayward. Yeah, like, yeah yeah i get that like i understand that they it's wild that they got to this point yeah and it's a yeah. great success story but they played like absolute dog shit in yeah, game they, seven yeah yeah it was it, they just couldn't hit a shot, right? Which was right. Just some, right. Like they were getting wide open threes, a lot of them. But uh, and it's it's crazy to think like if they just hit like two of those threes, just right. how yeah. different it, like it could have. Like been. If, if Rozier um, hit like one or two open yeah. at the end of that game, yeah. completely. Yeah. Well, yeah. the the game was in the fourth quarter. Morris misses his second free throw. Smart gets an offensive rebound. Yeah, uh, that was like a dog. Morris rebound, misses too. a three. Yeah. Smart gets another offensive rebound. It to Rozier. Rozier misses yeah. a three. And it's like, yeah. that's a fucking game in a nutshell. Because mm. so where I got really defensive after the game, A, I put it out there right away. Like, I'm not I'm not doing the Jalen Brown sucks thing. Because, mm-hmm. like, this is, he, yes, he he for, for sure sucks. Bad game. But he's never going to have a bad game again now. Because he's, <laughs> yeah. he's just a fucking animal. He's going, like, he. Yeah, for sure. Not only is he crazy talented. But he just has probably the best mind of any player in the NBA. Oh, so sure. he's going to bust his ass yeah, yeah. and he's going to come back and he's going to be so much better. But the other thing that, make me re- that made me really mad, 
is that people were like, oh, smart. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. They wouldn't have gotten yeah. out of the first round without Marcus Smart. Smart oh, coming sure. back is so, what got them past the box. Is, so are people thinking Marcus Smart? They have oh, to yeah. People, Marcus Smart? Well, he's a, so he's a free agent. And he said after yeah. the game, like, I, I got to get paid, which he does. And maybe oh, the Celtics can't okay. do it. But if but if they can't afford him, like that, that's going to suck. I know that everyone this year thought that losing Avery Bradley would really hurt them. And it didn't because Jay yeah. ended up being so good. But there's yeah. not going to be – like Smart's not going to leave, and then you're going to be like, oh, we've got some – we've got this up. good uh, <laughs> defender. Yeah, he's he's a fucking monster. I love Marcus Smart. He, yeah, I, for sure. We'll, we'll never be able to see him miss another three, unfortunately. <laughs> but Yeah. Hey, he might end up in Orlando. I was going to say, maybe – yeah. <laughs> like I, I'm not enough of an NBA fan to yeah. know if they need a – who's their point guard? Well, starting point out is currently DJ Augustine. Mm. Well, it sounds like you need <laughs> yeah. a point guard. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we could use maybe a bit more outside shooting is the one mm. thing. And I don't know if that's really Marcus's forte. Yeah. Oh, it's, 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 just it's, ask him. He loves it. <laughs> he, loves, <laughs> he was going through a slump this year. And uh, so I work at a, a TV station and uh, we they asked uh, – one of our, our Celtics guy, they were like, with Smart, you know, he's he's in a kind of a funk right now. Does he need to keep shooting to get his his confidence up? And the guy was like, Oh, it's not a confidence thing. He's gonna keep like, <laughs> it's it, that that's never the issue with Smart. He thinks he's going to hit every shot and he misses every yeah. single one. I don't watch a ton of Celtics, yeah, but yeah. like, it is one of the most uh, infuriating slash hilarious things in the world is like watching Marcus Smart because there you can like legitimately tell when he is feeling it for some reason and you can just see him bringing up the ball and like you're like there's no fucking way this guy is going to pass and he yeah. just jacks up from anywhere and you're like that guy is on his bullshit right now. Yeah. Well that's why I was getting <laughs> that's why I was getting pissed at Rozier in game 7 because so many times especially in a game they were up they were up 12 so many times it was, it was like Shot clock, nah. Let's just <laughs> yeah. like let, let, let's just take a pull up three every time. Uh, so g- g- is is Jonathan Isaac good? By the way, I meant to ask you that. Yeah, I rec- I think he's going to be really good. Um, obviously this season we didn't see that much of him, but uh, like his defense, he's awesome on D. Like hmm. uh, it doesn't really reflect it in the stats because because he, he didn't really play much. But uh, but in terms of yeah, I think he's going to be crazy good, and it seems like. So far, it seems like he's like just going off magic social media. Like it seems like he's the only one who's kind of like putting in work in the off season, <laughs> just because like nice. every photo and video is just of him. And he already looks like uh, super, like he's been hitting the gym in a major way. And uh, I, yeah, I, I I'm super excited about him. I think he's I think they chose well with him. But Here, here's uh, what I realized about the the magic. Uh, so they have the sixth pick this year, right? Yes. So this might be two years in a row, depending if they get this guy, and it's the guy that you talked about a little bit on your podcast. If they get this guy, yeah. it'll be two years in a row where they really took that. This guy's got an awesome body, and who knows what the hell else he has. Let's just yeah. take the guy. Pick Mo Bamba is yeah. So he's projected to go from anywhere like four or six kind of range. I yeah. have never. I've only seen Bamba. I saw one clip on Twitter during the year where he had this huge dunk and the guy on the call was like Bamba. And it was this, this crazy thing. Yeah. Here, here's where I'm, po- I'm positive that Mo Bamba sucks. Uh, he has a seven oh, ten okay. wingspan and he's not projected to be a top three pick. He has to yeah. be the worst fucking basketball player in the world. How do you have a seven <laughs> ten wingspan and you're not automatically and like, teams aren't like, salivating. Right. Like you. teams are fucking nah. jumping over each other to, to Yo, that's get why- you. I think, um, firstly, I think it's a strong year. Okay. And secondly, I think he's, uh, yeah, I think he should go higher than, if, like, if the Magic get him, it slips. I think he's, I think he's, that's a steal. But, um, again, I haven't really, I've never seen him play. <laughs> so That's so the best part about the draft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. That's, take, that's take, everybody's take draft analysis. Take this with a grain of <laughs> salt, because I've watched, like, two highlight videos, and I'm, like, sold on him. But, um. That's, like, but, my, my favorite like draft story. Uh, the, pe- go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Not you. Oh, uh, I was gonna say my, this is my favorite thing about the draft. It's like it, you, uh, the ye. Uh, what's his quote? name? Uh, 
E Jinlan? Yeah, G- Jinlan. Oh, where yeah. like where like he went in the top five because he had a great workout against the chair. <laughs> oh yeah. Right, that? yeah. Amazing. That was like the, yeah. the lore of that story was unbelievable. I just like that he he seems so firstly he's got that body, but secondly he seems very coordinated. Like he can like kind of dribble and stuff, which I think is a good sign. Just because yeah. also I've been watching Biz Mac Biombo for okay. like two years now. And he's a guy who just cannot catch a basketball. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I love Biz. I, Great I, basketball I name. Uh, yeah. oh. Let's do some legacy talk. Uh, did you see Kobe Bryant's tweet? I didn't. Pete, did you see it? I don't think so. This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. So after the game, after game seven, he tweeted, we can enjoy one without tearing one down. I love what he's doing. Don't debate what can't definitely be won by anyone. Hashtag enjoy my five, enjoy MJ's six, enjoy LeBron's quest. So Kobe's response to uh, LeBron or MJ, who's the GOAT, is like, guys, let's not talk about who's the GOAT between me, Kobe, (laughs) or between me, Michael Jordan, and LeBron, when nobody in the world was like... Included Kobe Bryant in the discussion. That's... I'm gonna t- I'm yeah. gonna tweet like guys. Can we stop picking between John and Paul? It, they both made great music. Hashtag <laughs> I play a little guitar. Hashtag <laughs> <laughs> that's the most um, ridiculous thing in the world. Wasn't sure if you were talking about us or the the Beatles because John versus Paul is quite a um, quite a common debate. I uh, know I meant the Beatles. Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, who, right. who's your favorite Beatle? Paul. I know your answer. It's who is it? Paul. Yeah, I was gonna McCartney. say it's the. It was. It's definitely Paul because I could just tell from listening to your music, you're a poppier guy, right? Which yeah. Also, I got to stick with the other Pauls, and uh, mm. yeah, I like Paul McCartney. I went to his concert uh, end of last year. He he killed it. He can still fucking go, man. Like when he does band on the run, and he's really fucking yelling. So good. Oh, for sure. And it was such a good show. I remember like. There was a lot of pyrotechnics when I saw them, but it was all just in uh, Live and Let Die. They just put all the pyrotechnics <laughs> in that one song, which was like in the middle of the show, which was quite weird because it was like nothing, nothing, nothing. Just all the explosions you've seen, just like <laughs> just chaos for like three minutes. It's like there was just bombs going off on stage, just straight fireballs. And, um, <laughs> And then just nothing else. Like and then smoke show. the rest of the night. The rest of the yeah. night is just That's, like there's smoke and you can't see That is see such anything. a good move to have like a grand finale in the middle of a, of a show and then be like, and now for the rest of the program. Yeah. But also instead of just having the odd little spark every now and then, just chuck it at once. And it's like a hell of a, it's a hell of a spectacle. It was, um, but yeah, that no, was great. So you should do that. Uh, if you next, next time you're playing in Boston, you should make surf music like your third song, have the whole choreography, yeah. and then not do anything else for yeah. any of the other things. Because Ooh. because people will be at the show, and you'll they'll see the dance moves. It'll be early on the show. They'll start calling mm. their friends, be like, hey, you got to get to this Paul Williams show. He's fucking third dancing song and, and he's, everything. He's going wild. Yeah, <laughs> and they come, and you're just fucking playing ballads the rest of the night. I mean, I actually I did that. I took that to the next level, though, because the one time I have done that album live i just did it in order so i i opened with that so there was dancing for the first song and then no more dancing for the rest of the show but uh that'll teach people to show up on time yes it's a lesson in punctuality yeah oh definitely Uh, Uh, i had some sweet visuals though as well there was like a projector screen it was Oh, you guys had to be there. Well, I mean, the the music video was unbelievable. Like, the visuals in that music video were great. And the album cover is like, Oh, thanks. I did did have one question about the music video. Uh, Where did the blood come from at the beginning of the the music video? I mean, it's open. Yeah, it's open to interpretation. But um, some people have said... That's some bullshit. Had you fallen off off your uh, skateboard? Uh, But my... My theory was more like I'd, I'd just been beaten up or something. Someone uh, had, I've I, been punched. I have a separate theory. Okay. And uh, it's from the bottle of Coke that you tried to open and couldn't do it because it wasn't a twist off. <gasps> was that intentional? Wow. No. So we accidentally did it. So we, <laughs> we filmed the, the whole that one kind of shot. We did it yeah. three times. And 
in the first take, I went to do it. Oh, I, I thought the, it'd be funny to do the gag that I couldn't open it. And so then I have to pass it to her and she awkwardly opens it for me. But, um, but then we went to do that. And so I pretended I couldn't open it, pass it to her. And then she gave it back and was like, it's a twist off. And I think I kind of laughed a bit, but I was like, keep that in. That's really funny. And I will like subtitle it. And, um, cause we went with the third time we did it, I think. That's hilarious. Uh, well, you know what you should say when people say where the blood come from? Just say mm. the previous take and don't elaborate. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's really good, actually. It'd be like, that's wow, really good. Chris fun got fa- uh, rambunctious during the previous take, sounds like. Yeah. Here's, here's a fun little uh, behind-the-scenes uh, anecdote. Ooh. I So I had a bottle of fake blood, and we did that take. Don't we all? first take um, <laughs> a bunch of times. Also, because there was no speaker, so the music was real quiet, and I was trying to lip sync with it, and it was real hard because I was playing it out of my phone. And, um, and, and uh, But I checked the back of the blood just to make sure it wasn't, like, poisonous, and I was like, oh, yeah, it doesn't say not to put it in your mouth. So then I'd, every shot I'd, like, dr- I'd pour some into my mouth and, like, dribble it out kind of. And then um, I got through the whole bottle because we did it so many times because I kept, I kept not – being out of time with the music or whatever and then um and then right at the end i got some on like my clothes or something and i was like does it wash out and i was checking the bottle and when i was checking the bottle that time i'd literally just finished the bottle like the very first thing it said was like do not put near your mouth <laughs> and i was like oh wow i have just drunk in like a bottle of this but uh anyway and then actually i was covered in fake blood so i because we were in this car park in in auckland new zealand i i went uh I went to just find the nearest like public bathroom just to like wash it off. So I walked across the main kind of square in the city to this like a uh, little kind of in, it's it's this weird place. It's got like a cinema and a food court. It's like a, it's not really a mall, but it's like an arcade and stuff. Anyway, I went into the bathroom and um, and I was there like washing all this fake blood off. And then out of the corner of my eye, I was like, "Is there a man just standing kind of?" next to me just watching for ages and so i turned and looked and sure enough there was he'd just been standing there for like two minutes probably not two minutes but um and i was i was weirded out because there was like other sinks to use there was all oh, this one other sink and so i kind of looked at him and was like hi and then i i went back to it and then i looked at the sink and i realized there was a like a small out of order sign on the other sink so he was just he was just waiting to wash his hands and so then I was like, I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I, I let him use it. And then um, I could tell he was like, kind of, he looked at all the blood in the sink and he was like, <laughs> weirded out. And then I was like, oh, it's, uh, it's fake. Which made it a <laughs> thousand <laughs> times weirder. Yeah. I'm, yeah, it did. As soon as I said that, he was like, I could tell he was like, uh-huh. And then he just like left real quick. Like, I don't think he dried his hands. He was just like out because it was like super weird. But, I was um, going to say it's very, very, uh, very weird of you to cast judgment on somebody else in a bathroom when you're the guy cleaning blood off of his entire body in a sense. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. But yeah, I, yeah, I, I just wasn't thinking that. I was like, oh, yeah, just get this like corn syrup or whatever it is off my off my hands. But um, but yeah. Well, on yeah. that note, that was a uh, that's a hilariously terrifying great story well, that, that actually answers the question of where the blood came from then the yeah. music video picks up right there uh paul thank you for joining us you uh hey. y- you've been awesome we love the podcast love all the music and uh we'll keep listening and all that junk thanks hey thanks so much guys and thanks for having me i'll definitely listen to this podcast i was gonna say now yeah, that uh sometime yeah now that you've listened to a podcast about yourself what do you think yeah. big guy <laughs> yeah I mean, well i mean I- Wait, listen to this one that I'm on. Yeah, because this one was about you as well. Some, yeah, most of it. True. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I, I. Yeah, I had a good time. I, nice. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Good. Good. Great podcast. I'll I'll go on iTunes and and give it a five star. Wow. Ooh, yes. Yeah, please they... please leave a review. If if you leave a five star review, we read it on the podcast. That's a little carrot that we dangle for the the listeners. So keep oh, that keep that okay. in your back pocket. Well, hey. Uh, yeah, wh- okay. Well. You might be getting one from me, so look out for it. Can't wait, buddy. Okay, thanks, Paul. Hey, thanks heaps, guys. Paul Williams, what a nice guy. Yeah, I I, he, I love him. He's great. That was just a real con- – that was a conversation. Yeah, we we didn't go in with, like, many notes, or at least I didn't. I, I, I had, like, a bajillion Ooh, notes. Okay, yeah, well, I had, like for you I, on I, being prepared. I, I, yeah, I, I could have gone a, a million levels – deeper i could have gone on with that guy forever he was he was great yeah he would be a i feel like he'd be a great guy to just like grab lunch with yeah he's i can't believe 
guys more famous than him. I know that's that's wild. Do you think that he was being nice and just saying that? Why would someone be nice and say that their brother is famous? Yeah, no, that's definitely like uh, he he's probably more famous if His he's brother married. has a TV show. I like Guy. Yeah, I'm I mean, a, they're, I'm a they're big, really good together. Big guy, guy. But there's no way but, like, that I, would I love ev- Paul. Yeah, I, Paul is the hook on uh, on advanced analytics to me. I yeah, think, he's so. what a what an angel. Um, you, we both said, oh, I had something I hadn't uh, had before this weekend. So now we're going to talk about those things. You had a what? A whiskey Rita. It is a. Uh, it was Jack Daniels, mm-hmm. but a margarita. So it was and just a margarita with uh, whiskey instead of uh, tequila? tequila. Yeah. Oh, Which awesome. Is, yeah, and like it was really weird because it delivered on every part of what that sounds like. Like it tasted like whiskey, but also had uh, like a margarita kick to it, mm-hmm. and it was just like a really weird thing in my mouth because like I couldn't tell if I really liked it. But I was satisfied that it delivered on what was promised. And you had salt? Go- did you have no, salt I, going I on? No, I didn't do any salt. Hmm. I usually do salt, but I didn't. I didn't know if it would be good with a, with whiskey. Hmm. The drink that um that everyone's got to jump on board with, I have only found out about it like a few months ago. Uh, but chiladas, not micheladas, but just but chiladas. It's just a it's a cerveza and some lime juice and salt. Oh yeah, that I would. That, and it's delicious. On that. It's so good. It's just easy. It's like a. Is that like a cocktail or is it just a way to present a beer? It's uh like you get it at like a taco place or something. Okay. Yeah. But like, is it presented as a like a beer or is they it... they give you a glass that's I don't know like an eighth full with uh, lime juice hmm. and then a beer. Oh, interesting. And and then there's salt on the rim and everything. It's it's, it's I'm hundred percent in. It's so good, uh, very very delicious. I had something I hadn't had, uh, ricotta pie. Oh, I I've never had that. I don't really. Think. Yeah. What kind of an Italiano are you? Isn't it ricotta? What? That's how I pronounce it. Ricotta cheese. Ricotta. Ricotta. Maybe. Well, maybe some Italians say it yeah. like that. You're Italian, though. You, you, re, you your Italianness. When I said you're Italian, I wasn't saying why are you apostrophe re Italian. Mm-hmm. I was saying your, your Italian, your Italian uh, right. characteristics. Yes. Yeah. Like, like I don't want to say I don't trust your Italian, but your Italian is but all over the place. It, it definitely is. But I mean, there are, uh, but there are definitely words uh, that Italians pronounce differently, like depending on where. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Like, like, like pasta. Yeah, pasta was like a pasta. Bruschetta. They, yeah, they, they they almost never do the syllables at the end. Yeah, and it's it's very weird. Like, uh, and it's very difficult to try to pronounce something off of a page hmm. uh, <laughs> because Italian because it can go in so many different directions. But I always call it regatta. Hmm. Uh, well, regatta ra- pie. Regatta pie is ridiculous. It is so good. It just. It's, it sounds gross. It's, it's just no, a pie it's high of cheese. It's like cheese. Well, if it's if you're talking about ricotta in any sort of uh, dessert, it's not ricotta in the sense of ricotta cheese. It's ricotta with a million fucking gallons of sugar, and it's it's basically frosting. So it's like it tastes like it's like cheesecake, and the cheese happens to be ricotta. Okay, and it was so fucking good. Did you see the. That bowl foods are in. That what foods? Bowl foods. Eating your food out of a bowl. There was some fucking uh, internet place that posted an article being like, bowl foods are the hot new trend of 2018. Jesus. It, it's like, what the fuck? What, what, and what was an example of it? Like, it was just like... This the, cereal is a bowl food. <laughs> it was literally just like, people are starting to eat food out of bowls. <laughs> that was the what do you think we were article. doing with bowls before like you think that we just had bowls for no fucking reason yeah, it was it was hilarious bowls have always been there for food maybe they thought it was just primarily a drugs thing mm-hmm. wouldn't know not, not drug, drug guys, guys. Now we're